Field service management and servitization are changing companies and industries. Darren Roos is the CEO of IFS. They've just been named a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for field service management. Darren, tell us about IFS and tell us about your role at the company. I'm CEO of IFS. Um, we're an enterprise software business, one of the fastest growing enterprise software businesses in our space. And we really focus on, as you said, field service management, but also on ERP and uh, enterprise asset management. We have just about 4,000 employees globally, over 400 partners. And what really differentiates IFS is that we're really focused on our customers, focused on those outcomes, and how do we make sure that they're deriving value from the solutions that we provide. Darren, we hear a lot about field service management and servitization. I think we need to begin this conversation with an explanation of field service management. And and what do we mean by that phrase? I think at its very simplest term, it's about tracking and optimization and operationalization of field operations for really any organization. Uh, But I think that, you know, now, especially in COVID-19 times, we're moving into a space where service is much more important. And uh, the way in which service impacts businesses is a little broader than just that track, optimize and operationalize. Darren, how does field service management impact or benefit customer experience? So it's become really important, Michael, because companies across the board have realized that service is an area in which they really must differentiate if they want to remain relevant. And it's happened because end users desire really memorable uh, experiences. They demand guaranteed service outcomes. And service is very often the face of the brand and the way that they create new opportunities. Field service done right gets people uh, to the right customers with very clear instructions. It also helps customer loyalty, reduce attrition rates. And I think the the importance of getting service right is something that really can't be underestimated. Um, At the financial level, services really shifted from being a cost center to being a very powerful profit center. And I think that as consumers, we all recognize the impact that service has. So, you know, those are really important elements that I think can't be underestimated. And of course, I have to ask, what has been the role of IFS in this evolution? We are real thought leaders in this space. We've invested heavily in getting, uh, you know, the right team of people on board so that irrespective of the industry, we're able to go in and really advise customers on how they can leverage service management in order to have an impact on their business. You know, it's a lot less of a, of a bolt on now. It's, it's very much technology that is purpose built to be able to help customers to really drive value for their customers irrespective of of the industry that they're in. So, you know, broader range of capabilities, more predictive analytics, uh, more next generation customer focused capabilities. It's much more streamlined and integrated. Um, And with IFS, we're able to bring together these technical capabilities, this technology with the domain expertise from the people that we've recruited uh, and bring them together to really drive a specific outcome for a customer that is focused on enabling this service app journey that they're looking for. It sounds like you're trying to weave service into the foundation or the core of operations across many different departments in an organization. It's service has changed a lot. You know, we, we all understand that there is um, uh, wanting to offer a better service or as a consumer expecting a better service. And I think that's something that most people will relate to. And then you, of course, you have the angle of servitization also. And it's really the way in which these two things come together. How can a business bring new models to market that are enable them to, that enabling them to drive new uh, revenue streams for their business while at the same time improving the customer experience? And the obligation changes because the company that's providing that servitized offering has a much deeper responsibility, but the prize is much bigger because they have this recurring revenue stream that is much more predictable and and more resilient to changes. We see it in more and more industries now. And, and, you know, whether you're talking about just better service or whether you're talking servitization to drive new business models, both are, are becoming ubiquitous now. You've used the term servitization several times. What do you mean by that? What servitization is, is it's the way in which you're providing a service around a product so that the offering becomes the service. 
Um, and I think that that's really, I, I touched earlier on this way in which businesses are able to build um, a more predictable, more resilient business by providing a servitized offering, perhaps a company that manufactured washers and dryers and sold those washers and dryers, now providing uh, a price to their consumer per wash. And we see these models really becoming ubiquitous now, irrespective of the industry. Um, and that's the exciting part, because the business becomes more resilient, they become better, they become uh, more profitable. And for the consumer, it's a better experience. Um, and th th that that's such a compelling value proposition. So I think that for both parties, it becomes uh, a, a much more um, positive experience. So at the end of the day, is the subscription component important in this? Absolutely. I think it, it goes away from the importance of building a good product and buying it at, at a specific price, but really in, encompassing this whole journey for the customer of how are they going to consume uh, the whatever the output is that that product is. Um, and that's the servitization model. And so it's the journey that is the, I was going to say that the challenge, I guess it's both the challenge and the opportunity for businesses. I think it's, it is really important to understand that when you come from manufacturing a product and, uh, you know, providing after sales service or moving towards contract service or ultimately a subscription, it is a continuum. And there's a journey that the customer needs to go on. And, you know, frankly, there's a journey that the company needs to go on who's providing that service. So I think it's important to understand that while your subscription offering might be the end goal that you're looking for, depending on the industry that you're in, there may be a few steps in between that you need to go on. Darren, how much of this is a cultural change, a mindset change, rethinking the relationship between your organization and your customer? Yeah, I think that's a great point, Michael. And it, it's very much a cultural thing. I think that, uh, you know, if we if we think about the, the software industry, uh, you know, there's a great example of servitization. Historically, what we would have done is we would have built software, sold it to a customer, and then, you know, they would have done whatever they did with that, that software. And potentially, they would have gotten uh, their maintenance and support offering. But that was just another transaction every time you ship new software every few years. Uh, but when you think about the cloud, which is a, an example of servitization, uh, companies that, that operate in this way have to think very differently. They have to think about adoption. How is the customer using the product? They have to think about that customer experience. Um, is it a good experience to use it? They have to think about how do they really keep that customer getting the value that they'd anticipated getting uh, rather than just making a product and selling it. It's a very different proposition. And that requires a cultural shift. And I think that, that those shifts are always customer focused, always focused on how the customer is going to have a better experience. It sounds like there's a dual link that's going on all the time here, because on the one hand, it is clearly beneficial for the customer. You're creating that stronger link, that stronger relationship, the virtuous cycle of engendering loyalty back to the organization that's providing this servitized offering. But at the same time, it creates a responsibility for that providing organization to then do the right thing for the customer to maintain that positive cycle. I think that's exactly accurate. And, and, and it's why servitization has been so successful, because it is such a virtuous circle. There is real value uh, for, for both the company that's providing it and the, the, the customer that is receiving it. Darren, you speak with many organizations that are undertaking this servitization journey. What are some of the, the lessons that you've seen that can make it successful and make it as easy as possible? It's got to be a cultural change, right? So you, you, you've got to be thinking about what is the process um, that you're really trying to impact here? How is this going to impact the customer? Um, are you sure that that virtuous circle that we, we've touched on is in fact being created? Is there value for, 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 for your customer in this discussion? And I think that that's really important. And what we see is that there is tangible value in, in, in the analysis that we've done with IDC. We see that service revenues are on average a third larger um, than their peers in companies that are adopting servitization. Uh, we see an eight times more likely to increase profits directly linked to digital transformation in these servitized companies. So the, pro the, the, the value is, is really tangible. 
But I think that what is particularly important is they have to be thinking through the entire value chain. Are we an organization that is ready to do this? Do we have the processes that are ready to do it? Are we culturally ready to do it? And then are the customers going to see value? And maybe you start with the customer and work backwards. But but all of those different levels have to be there. Otherwise, you, you, it's, it's not going to work. And then I have to ask you, give us the 30-second sales pitch on IFS. Our commitment to service management and the experience that we have is really unmatched in the industry. Uh, if you look at the Gartner FSM Magic Quadrant, you'll see that we lead it. But really, it's not about that. It's about the depth of talent that we have, the extensive experience that we have that is really ha- has the battle scars on taking customers on this journey and how we help them to drive servitized value in their customers. Um, and you can't do that without the domain expertise. So that's why you should go with IFS. As we finish up, give us your final Final thoughts on servitization and advice for companies that are taking this journey. What I would say is, is that you need to find a partner that has the experience of doing a lot of these projects. You know, IFS have had a lot of examples of, of, of where we've helped customers, and that gives us this, this institutional knowledge that we can draw on. But it is really important that you have a partner, in, a technology partner in this journey that is able to, to leverage lots of experience um, in order to help you on the journey. It needs a solid tech foundation. That's going to be important. Um, You're not going to be able to do it on on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, You know, if we think about larger organizations, particularly some of the complexity that you have to deal with around the customer relationship management, around the accounting treatments, um, around the the complex scheduling, parts management, all of those elements are things that come in a a robust field service management suite. um, and, And they're not the kinds of things you can cobble together uh, without the technology. Um, and I think that, you know, you, you've got to be very outcome focused. It's not a race. You can't try and do it overnight. I think during COVID-19, we've seen customers start to go on this journey. We've seen some great, you know, positive steps, uh, but you do need to take the time. And and the reason the time is so important is because of this cultural change that we spoke of. You can put technology and you can come up with a new business model, uh, but really to to get the institutional change to happen where you're more customer focused and, and are focused on the adoption and value is something that takes a bit more time. And, and, and that's a journey that organizations have to go on. Darren Roos, CEO of IFS. Thank you very much for taking time to speak with us. Thank you, Michael.